Welcome everyone to War Thunder Histories episode 8. So I put out a Q&A video recently and I had a question about my favourite World War II vehicle and I realised I hadn't done a video on it. So today we're learning about the A27M Cromwell. As always we'll look at its design and development and its service history and specifically the Cromwell's role at the Battle of Happy Valley during the Korean War which is more commonly known as the Forgotten Battle of the Forgotten War. And of course we will look at its role in World War II and then finally its performance in War Thunder, so I hope you guys enjoy! The Cromwell's development started in 1940, at the same time as the Crusader entered service. This was partly due to the British government recognising that the Crusader's design would quickly become obsolete. The new design was expected to enter service in 1942 with the bigger 6-pounder or 57mm gun, compared with the Crusader's 40mm gun. Three initial designs were put forward, with Vauxhall producing the design designated A23, which was essentially a scaled-down Churchill tank. Another company, Nuffield, produced the A24 design, heavily based on the Crusader using the Liberty V12 engine which was designed in the late stages of World War I. Although massively outdated, the design was expected to be able to enter production quickly due to its similarities with the Crusader. A final design was submitted by Leyland Motors in conjunction with Birmingham Railway Carriage and Wagon, or BRC and W for short. This was very similar to Nuffield's design, but featured a different track and suspension. All three designs were considered and evaluated in January of 1941, with Nuffield's design of the A24 being determined as the winner. Six of these prototypes were ordered for the spring of 1942. In October of the previous year, Rolls-Royce had begun reworking the Merlin engine for use in tanks, and on the 6th of April 1941, a Leyland-built Crusader fitted with the new engine began testing. The vehicle was able to reach speeds of up to 50 miles per hour. Although impressive, it was found that the existing Crusader parts were not durable enough for the now doubled power output. In mid-1941, Leyland, concerned about engine cooling issues on previous designs such as the Crusader and Covenanter, made a decision to design a totally new project which would house the new Rolls-Royce Meteor engine, and eliminate some of the previously mentioned issues. The projects were split by the British to avoid investing fully in a potentially flawed design. The first, designated A24 Cromwell I, was continued by Nuffield still using the Liberty engine and working from design aspects of the Crusader. The second, developed by English Electric as the A27L, later taken over by Leyland, designated Cromwell II, again using the Liberty engine but working from a new chassis design also including the same gearbox as the Churchill tank. And finally, BRC and W designed the A27M Cromwell III, designed to house the Rolls-Royce Meteor and the same Churchill gearbox as the A27L, along with provisions to use the Liberty V12 engine should problems arise with the Meteor. On a side note, these Cromwells were not production names. The Cromwell 1 became the Cavalier, the Cromwell 2 became the Centaur, and the Cromwell 3 did become the production model, however the 3 was dropped and redesignated in accordance with actual production models. During development, the A27M was given a totally new cooling system when compared to previous designs. The new system reduced the amount of power lost when driving the cooling system from 90 horsepower down to 30 horsepower. The first A27M Cromwell was delivered to the British Army for trials in March of 1942, several months before the A24 that eventually arrived four months late, and was already considered outdated. On top of this, the A24 was found to be vastly underpowered. Even with this, for some reason, they still ordered it into production, even though it was very limited. Compared with the A24, the A27M had almost 600 horsepower from its Meteor engine. This gave it a top speed on road of 40 miles per hour, along with help from its improved Christie suspension system. The Cromwell, much like all British tanks from World War II, was designed to be able to fire on the move. This was helped by the hydraulically powered turret with proportional speed controls. The A27M Cromwell's design was finalised on the 2nd of February 1944 and ordered into production. This was after troop trials determined some minor issues with oil leaks, brake failures and clutch failures, all of which were corrected over a little bit of extra time. Test crews received the Cromwell very well, noting its mobility, handling and relatively low maintenance. The vehicle had a range of 170 miles on road and a range of 80 miles off road. Crewed by five men, a driver, gunner, loader and commander with a co-driver or bow gunner in the hull next to the driver. The vehicle initially was produced with a 6 pounder or 57 mm gun. Later it would house the bigger, ordnance quick firing 75 mm gun similar to the one found on the Sherman. The vehicle could also ford through four feet of water without a snorkel. The early variants of Cromwell had a frontal armour thickness of three inches, an inch more than the early Shermans. However, due to the box shape of the Cromwell and the lack of slope, it was much less effective. Later Cromwells had up to four inches of armour, which again was far less effective than the sloped armour found on a Sherman. The vehicle was also armed with two 7.92mm Beza machine guns, one mounted in the hull and one mounted coaxially. In total, around 4,000 vehicles were produced in a variety of variants. 
The primary user was the British Army, some being exported to Portugal, Poland, Israel, Greece and Czechoslovakia. Moving on to the Cromwell's service life. The Cromwell entered frontline service in June of 1944, landing in France on D-Day plus one. The Cromwell saw extensive action in France and was the primary British tank in the armoured brigades of the 7th Armoured Division. The Cromwell excelled as an armoured reconnaissance vehicle due to its high mobility and low profile. And although the 75mm gun was effective against most German tanks such as the Panzer IV and Panzer III, on the rare occasion it found a Tiger or Panther tank it had a next to 0% chance of penetrating one frontally. To correct this issue, the 75mm high velocity gun was considered, however, due to its larger size it was unable to fit inside the Cromwell's turret, so the Cromwell mostly fought alongside Sherman Fireflies. The Cromwell served until the end of the war, and remained in service after the war. Again, on a little side note, it was quite ironic that the majority of Tigers and Panther tanks that were found in France during World War II was actually in the British sector, and not in the American sectors like you would be led to believe. After World War II, during the Korean War, Cromwell served alongside the far more modern Centurion tanks in both the Royal Artillery and the 8th King's Royal Irish Hussars as reconnaissance vehicles. The 8th King's Royal Irish Hussars was my grandfather's regiment. My grandfather was a Lance Corporal during the Korean War and he served as a co-driver in a Cromwell. The regiment arrived in Korea on the 14th of November 1950 and began to travel north. And this brings us to the Battle of Happy Valley. On the 3rd of January 1951, the small force of Cromwell's, part of what was known as Cooper Force, a small reconnaissance troop led by Captain D.L. Astley Cooper of the 8th King's Royal Irish Hussars, was sent into the valley to support the 1st Royal Ulster Rifles. The reason why Cromwell's were sent and not Centurions is simply due to the fact that Centurions were too large and too heavy to enter the valley. It is not known the fate of all Cooper Force Cromwell's, but eyewitness accounts said as follows. My grandfather's Cromwell, designated H for Halifax, was driving through the valley in the early hours of the 3rd of January, commanded by Lieutenant C.G. Alexander. My grandfather described seeing many wounded Royal Ulster Rifles men on the side of the road, with his crew stopping to assist soldiers and placing them on the engine deck of the tank, and with the situation deteriorating, they attempted to find a way out of the valley. In the dark, my grandfather described feeling the vehicle lurch suddenly to the side, and suddenly coming to a stop. Another member of his crew came to the front of the Cromwell and ordered them to bail out. What had happened was the vehicle had slipped off the road and thrown its track. Sadly, the commander, Lieutenant C.G. Alexander, had been killed by shrapnel from a mortar, meaning he could no longer give directions to the driver who was driving in pitch black. My grandfather was ordered to spike the gun, which is where you place a shell down the end of the barrel and then fire the gun. With solid shot ammunition, the shells hit each other in the barrel and split the barrel so it cannot be used. Instead of doing so, my grandfather found it more appropriate to go and assist the wounded men on the engine deck. The entire crew moved to the back of the Cromwell to help the wounded men. And as he described, in seconds we were surrounded by Chinese. My grandfather was subsequently captured and spent the remainder of the war in captivity. H for Halifax was captured by Chinese and Korean forces and was put into use with them. Believed to be the same Cromwell, which was later knocked out by an 8th King's Royal Irish Hussar Centurion later in the war. The only tank on tank kill by a Centurion for the entire war, and even more ironically, it was a world record distance shot at the time. All Cromwells sent to the Battle of Happy Valley were destroyed or captured. Captain D.L. Astley Cooper's Cromwell was set alight and he bailed out. He is believed to have given a final order of every man for himself before taking a Bren light machine gun with his loader and charging up a hill. Captain D.L. Astley Cooper's fate is still unknown and he is presumed killed in action. The Bovington Tank Museum has a memorial for those tankers lost during the Korean War. This includes Lieutenant C.G. Alexander and Captain D.L. Astley Cooper's names. Going back to the Cromwell itself, by 1950, the Cromwell was completely outdated. Even if the Chinese and North Korean forces were still using T-34s from World War II, the Cromwell, when compared to the Centurion, was at a significant disadvantage. They were eventually retired in 1955. If you'd like to see a Cromwell, again, Bovington Tank Museum has one, which is operational. So finally, that brings us to its in-game performance. We'll talk specifically about the Cromwell 5. It's a British Rank 2 Battle Rating 3.3 medium tank armed with a 75mm gun along with a coaxial 7.92mm Beezer. It has a reload speed with an aced crew of 5 seconds. I recommend bringing 25 rounds of M61 shot with 5 rounds of smoke. All of your ammo is stored under the turret so any more you will cook off with every hit. In game the Cromwell has a top speed of just over 30mph on road, but you may as well never reverse as you do so at about 1mph, as you can see here with this video. When trying to disengage, I recommend you actually turn around rather than trying to reverse, as it is much faster as you can see here. With this in mind, stay mobile, flank and shoot enemies in the sides. The Cromwell's excellent mobility is its strong point and always should be used to its advantage. Although your gun cannot penetrate tigers and panthers from the front, you will have no trouble penning them from the sides. 
Although, at 3.3, you will mostly fight Panzer 3s and Panzer 4s, which the 75mm gun can handle easily. Although, it is worth mentioning, since you only have access to solid shot ammunition, you should always be aiming for critical components and specific crew members. The Cromwell also has half decent armour. It won't stop direct impacts from basically anything, but it will stop glancing blows quite comfortably. Provided you play its strengths, the Cromwell is an incredible tank. The Cromwell at higher battle ratings, where you encounter Tigers and Panthers more frequently, it can handle itself. Overall, I think anyone who plays the Cromwell will love it, because although it does have its slight disadvantages with, for example, reverse speed and the lack of sloped armour, it is a very reasonable tank, and especially when you're at battle rating 3.3, it, it can really handle itself, and as I say, it can handle itself at higher BRs. I think you will love it. I may be a bit biased, but that's just my opinion. I thoroughly enjoy playing this tank, and, you know, I've, I've had very, very, very good games in this thing. And um, as I say, it's just overall, it's a, it's a wonderful tank to play. It's very easy to use. Just before we end, I'd like to thank Pinky and Golden for helping me get this footage together. I know this episode is a little bit different compared to past episodes in the series, but let me know what you think. Um, I will be doing a video on the Battle of Happy Valley just because it is the Forgotten Battle of the Forgotten War and I feel like it would be a good opportunity to shed some light on something that I haven't seen very much on YouTube and on top of that uh, I will be leaving a link in the description below for anyone who wants to go and listen to some interviews that my grandfather did with the Imperial War Museum in the 1970s and his experiences of the Korean War and um, yeah I just... I feel like this would be a good opportunity for you guys to learn a little bit more about my family history and for me to kind of give you some information on the Korean War as a whole. If there's a vehicle you guys would like to see in the series, please leave it in the comments section below. If you like what you saw, then of course leave me a like. And if you're new here and you like what I do, please feel free to subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.